The origin of the solar system is one of those things that makes scientists wonder, how did this happen? It gets their curiosity going. They see these planets going around this star, and they wonder, how did all these planets get to be like this? Why are some planets different than other planets? Why are some things all working the same and other things are different? What steps had to be taken in order for a solar system to be formed? When we try and put together a theory, the theory is going to have to fit the facts. We have the best theory when we have a theory that fits the most observations. And some of the observations that we've made up to this point are that the planets have almost circular orbits. We know they're elliptical, but they've been very close to being circular orbits here in our solar system. All of those orbits are almost all in the same flat plane like the Earth. They have little bits of tilts to them, but they're nearly in the same plane. They're not all going at a bunch of crazy angles to the plane of the solar system, not the major planets. The orbit direction matches the direction in which the Sun rotates on its axis. So as the Sun spins around, we all follow that direction around in our orbits as we're going around the Sun. And most of the planets rotate on their axes the same way that the Sun is rotating on its axis. Now, we spent a lot of time talking about the inner planets versus the outer planets, and we have noticed that there are lots of differences between the inner planets and outer planets. A good solar system origin is going to explain how that came to be. And we also have discovered that asteroids are not like broken up pieces of a large planet that somehow got destroyed. So we do not want a solar system origin which talks about once upon a time there was a big planet and it got smashed into pieces and those are the asteroids. That's not it. We want a solar system origin which is going to say why do we have these leftover pieces of rock that didn't seem to form a solar system? So comets also at the edge of the solar system means why is it that some of that other leftover stuff that didn't form planets is pushed way out there where all of that cold stuff condensed onto them making them a bunch of dirty snowballs. Let's talk about one of the early theories and I want to point out that this is in a category of theory which we would call a catastrophic theory. Now a catastrophic theory is a theory which talks about some big one-time event that very unlikely would repeat itself. So it would be a rare event, might even be a dramatic event. And sometimes if a catastrophic theory gets really dramatic, people might go ooh and ah and get emotionally caught up in it and say, that's the one I like because that sounds really cool. The scientists have to not get caught up in the emotional excitement of what a catastrophic theory has to offer. In fact, so sometimes they might even back away from catastrophic theory just to make sure that they're not being too biased. But you still have to consider how does the theory fit with the observations. That's the important thing. So here's an early idea of how the solar system could have been formed. In 1745, a fellow named Buffon proposed that maybe there was a star that was once passing by our star. And when the two stars got really close to each other, maybe there was gravitational pull between them that pulled gases and material out of both of the stars and made a great big long streamer in between them. And maybe if there was more gas towards the passing star, it left behind larger blobs of gas. And if there was less material near our sun, maybe it left behind smaller blobs. And those blobs then condensed into what we have as planets today. Now, one of many observations that doesn't fit with this is the fact that the outer planets have all hydrogen helium atmospheres and the inner planets don't. If we had material pulled out of two suns, what should have come out of two suns should have been lots of hydrogen and helium. And so this does not explain the difference in atmospheres that we see between inner and outer planets. There would be other problems with it too, but that's enough for us to consider another theory. This theory is in the category of evolutionary theories. When you're talking about an evolutionary theory, you're talking about a theory which says you have to allow a lot of time for this to happen 
because it's a very slow process. Probability needs to have a chance to take hold and let something happen which isn't going to happen absolutely every second. So lots of opportunity has to happen as lots and lots of time goes by and then an evolutionary theory becomes plausible. So for this particular evolutionary theory, it was a nebular theory proposed in the 17th century by Descartes. Yes, Descartes, the fellow who said, I think, therefore I am, and also gave you Cartesian coordinates. Descartes proposed that maybe a gas cloud, like a flat rotating gas cloud, could condense into rings of rotating gas. And then those rings of rotating gas could pull themselves together and become planets that are rotating around a central object which con collected more gas and that would have become the sun in the center. Well, this sounds like it's a pretty reasonable start for things. We just need to add a lot more detail to make sure that it actually works in terms of how the physics would work for things condensing on down. So this becomes our solar nebula hypothesis, which is our current theory of how the solar system formed. It would have started with a spinning ball of gas and dust, and it's important to say that there's dust because I hope you know that you get raindrops forming in clouds because there's a speck of dust that allows the water vapor to start to condense onto the dust and form a drop. So dusts help condensation. You can't just start with only gas. This is our currently accepted theory, and so this is the one that we're going to explore now in more detail.